best gear is the gear you have on you. What is up guys? Average Gear Reviewer here, back again with another quick little unboxing for you. And in this one, we've got something, I bet you've never heard of this before. And this knife is very, very appropriately named. So thanks for stopping by. If this is your first video, thanks so much for stopping by to watch our little unboxing video. If you're a returning viewer, hey, Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you guys. Love to hear the comments down below. Today, we're getting into something super cool, guys, and I'm super excited about this. It's really outside the box, so it's not something that you're going to be expecting, and it's made in the USA. It's from, what well, bam Kershaw. So, what do you say? Really quick, guys, I wanted to give you a little backstory on this one. Um, and, and if you want, I'm going to leave in the chapters down below where you can just jump to the unboxing. Uh, but I wanted to give you a little backstory on it. I like to, you know, give a little bit of the reason why I, I pick what I pick sometimes. So I was watching a video the other day with Travis Kennedy uh, doing a little bit of research for some videos that I've got coming up. And he was talking about his carry, and one of the things that he carried was a particular type of folding karambit. It was an Emerson wave type. So if you're familiar with that, it, it, you'll see later when we get into this one, I'll, I'll kind of explain the differences there. But uh, if you're familiar with that, it, it actually has a really rapid deployment out of the pocket. And he said that he used it a lot as just a regular everyday carry knife, and I had never considered one before. So uh, in my research, it's led me to something a little bit different that I want to try out, and I really want to share it with you today so yeah let's uh let's take a look at it here let's get into it okay guys switch to a little top down view so we can give you a little bit closer shot here but let's go ahead and get into this like i said we are unboxing the kershaw it's called the outlier and uh like i said before i have never heard of one of these which truly makes it an outlier in a lot of ways okay oh wow check that out any other goodies in there? Yeah. Okay, so a little thing you can scan for information. I guess if you want to know some information about this knife, you could scan that QR code there. I guess if you can, if your phone will pick it up. You got it? Only once, going twice. Okay. <laughs> I'll sit it over there. Maybe you can still pick it up over here. But yeah, guys, this is the Kershaw Outlier. Uh, super cool little folding karambit knife and uh, like I was saying before I saw this in that video well it wasn't this particular knife it was a um, Emerson but I thought what a cool idea and and I'm a big fan of karambits anyway so yeah um, I'm not crazy about the steel but really this was sort of me just wanting to try out a concept here of a, a sort of a different kind of carry so it's, it's, I think it's a nine, CR, ooh, man, that's got a nice snap to it. I think it's a, not a eight CR 13 MOV steel. Yeah. So not like a super premium steel that you're going to get here. Um, but it does have G10 scales. It's got a nice, uh, nice flat lay pocket clip there. And it has a thumb stud that can be moved from one side to the other. So and you can also switch the pocket clip from a right hand to a left hand carry. So what that allows to, you to do, and I'll, I'll have to show a demonstration of that, but when it's in your pocket, you can put your pinky through the thumb ring. Well, actually, I guess it would be like this. Yeah. Okay. So you put your finger through this thumb ring inside the pocket. And as you're pulling it out, you twist it just a little bit and this will catch and it deploys the blade. And I'll show you a demonstration of that here in just a second. Okay, so guys, really quick, I wanted to show you the uh, deployment method. And uh, this one I'm using it, I'm carrying it in a watch pocket because it's so small, you actually can carry it in a watch pocket. But what you wanna do is you wanna grip the ring. You can see it here, grip the ring. I'm gripping with my pinky. You wanna push it towards the outside of your pocket as you pull it out. And there it is. How cool is that? Now I will say you, if you don't have very stiff uh, material on your jeans, it may be a little hard to get it out. And it takes a little getting used to because what you're doing is you're catching it on this, this stud right here. 
and it actually is catching on your clothing as you pull it out and it automatically deploys it. Although it does have the flipper tab if you need to deploy that way. And also it can, uh, you can really, really deploy it well, I think, with the finger. And, uh, you know, that's one of my favorite methods of deployment there. So, yeah, that gives you an idea of the, uh, the little deployment method out of the pocket there. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of particulars about the blade. And this one, overall length is coming in. It looks like right about five inches. So it is very compact. Um, about an in inch and a half wide, maybe two inches here at the widest part at the spine, but generally about an inch and a half wide. So it's very, very compact. Doesn't take up a lot of space in your pocket. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think about that? I think that is pretty cool. It is spring assisted, so the snap on it, it, it doesn't take much of anything at all to deploy that. I mean, it really just jumps right out. Oh, let's see. What's the blade length on it? Got about a two and a half. No. Yeah, about a two and a half inch cutting blade on there. And it does seem like it came pretty sharp. Let's see. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, I've been looking at something. Oh, my. Wow, that is freaking razor sharp guys look holy cow <laughs> now that's some edge geometry in action there did you guys see that oh wow yeah did you see me just freaking well just barely knit me oh you really love me he really loves me did you see that that is super super sharp right out of the box guys i was not expecting that but you saw how it i mean it literally just and look at the little curly cues that it made dude you can't tell me that is not sharp so i had always thought of karambits as sort of like a backup weapon you know i've talked about before if you're carrying on your right side i always thought it made sense to me to carry something on your left so that you got something to get with that left hand if you can't get to um, the right one. Um, and I saw the video about Travis Kennedy talking about his EDC. Which, uh, you know, he, he had a lot of different thoughts on some things. And some things I agreed with and some things I didn't. But one of the things that he swore by was his EDC knife. Um, and it was an old Emerson Wave Karambit. And it just... He said that he used it all the time as a regular knife, but he said, but as a, as a, just a backup, you know, he said, these are really hard to beat. And, and like I said, guys, I already was a big fan of the Karambit style knife. I think it's a good way, um, just the way that you can lock this in here. And I love how this one has a little bit of jimping there around the finger ring too. So it's not just rounded. It's got uh, some good jimping there. But guys, the Karambit shape, once it locks into your hand, it's there. Um, you, that's not, you don't even have to hold on to it for it to stay there either. That's another cool thing about it is especially when you're using this off hand, it, that hand is still free. You can still grab stuff with this hand. Um, but at the same time, that's not, you, you're going to have a really hard time taking a weapon like this, uh, disarming somebody who has a weapon like this because it's just literally locked in there. You know, with the normal blade, you got to hold on and the pressure of your hand is what will keep it in your blade. So <clears throat> does make it easier to disarm but with one of these it's like how are you going to get that out of their hand you know like once it's once your finger is in there this thing's mine and it ain't going anywhere <laughs> so yeah um just another idea that i had the other day you know and i thought of watching that and i thought that was super cool uh really smart and of course you know navy seals they they know what they're doing as far as uh, edc they are used to having to cover all those bases. It's got a lot of spring tension to it there. It wants to snap back open. So you really got to put some pressure on it to close it. But man, open it, it just springs right out there. And I'll, I'll do a demonstration for you guys here and show you how that it opens up coming out of the pocket because that's really one of the coolest things about it. If you're not familiar with that Emerson Wave system, 
uh, it's a little bit different in this one to actually doesn't have a wave system, but if it did, it would have a, there'd be a piece that would come off the back of here that sort of looks like a wave coming forward there. And that's meant to catch the front edge of your pocket so that you can pull the knife and deploy it at the same time. It's one of the fastest ways to actually deploy, um, to deploy a knife as far as I know. Because it comes out, it's ready to go. Which is almost as good as having a, uh, a fixed blade on you, you know. But uh, yeah, a lot of the research that I've been doing um, and watching some of these videos as I was trying to come up with some ideas. And I came up with a, a really cool idea for um, a series that I'm going to do. And it's going to be how to carry like. And so what I'm doing is I'm analyzing the carries, looking at the carries of special operators GBRS guys. Uh, I watched Ed Calderon's video the other day and it was super, super eye opening. But I want to kind of put together a little series here of how to carry like. <clears throat> and it won't really be so much focused on the equipment, although it will some, like in this case, you know, this was Travis Kennedy's. This was one of his um, go to, you know, EDC knives. So this is a direct result of that video. But a lot of it to me is the why the the philosophy behind why they carry what they carry and also where they carry it you know um ed calderon's video was really eye-opening if you're not familiar with him um you should look him up but his video was super eye-opening he was all about getting things that are available in your immediate environment he carried a lot of things that i was just like wow um and he, he's one of those i plan on getting into in that series i'm going to do a video just about him because his just his whole idea, his philosophy of the EDC is what was interesting to me. And that's something I'm starting to get more interested in is is the why. Why you carry what you carry, you know. Um, the what can be very nebulous because a knife is a knife is a knife, really. Um, you know, any knife can be a working knife and any knife can be a combat knife depending on the situation. It's just that some are obviously going to be better at some things than others, right? Um but, you know, if you think about it, one of the most deadly knives in the United States is just a regular old steak knife. I think more people are killed with those every year than, uh, you know, Microtechs or Kaisers or <laughs> or Demco's or, you know, Civivis, anything else. Any of these flashy, wicked looking, uh, you know, just evil looking blades. These aren't the ones that are that are typically doing all the killing. It's the, the improvised weapon that somebody has to pick up to defend themselves. So um, I did want to real quick do a couple of uh, size comparisons with this one, just so you can see where it's um, I also wanted to compare it to a couple of other little uh, karambit style knives I have. I have one that's like the CRKT Provoke, but it's not. It's, it's a knockoff, so don't be thinking that I'm cool or anything. Um, just doing a size comparison. This one is the, oh, this is the Cold Steel. Which model is this? Oh, yeah, the Double Agent. Cold steel double agent. I like it because it's got it's got two hand rings there, so uh, you really can't go wrong, and you can hold it either way. So you know that's kind of cool. A little bit something a little bit different there. It's right about the same size, but now the double. Um, sorry, the uh, <laughs> the double agent. I couldn't think of the name of the knife. Help me out here, guys. You can see it. It got a lot longer cutting surface, and then this one I don't. Guys, I don't really know what this one is. It's a USA design. It might be an M Tech. Oh yeah, it's an M Tech. Yeah. So I had a couple of little cheaper karambits laying around. But you can see the M Tech and the double agent, I think, are about the same size as far as blade length. And M Tech might be just a little bit longer. But yeah. So that gives you an idea of where it falls into the uh, sort of the length category. And size category as far as uh, other karambits go. But yeah, I really want to get one of the provokes now because I love the action on that thing. I had to do a little bit of tuning on it. But um, yeah, so. And this does have, um, it's a liner lock, by the way. I don't think I covered that before. It does have a liner lock and it's uh, a good lock up there. It's like a 60% lock up, 50, 60, maybe 70% lock up there. So you can see that thing is. It's not going anywhere. Um, but really nice, uh, some really nice textured G10 handles there. Nice PVD black wash on the blade. And again, it, it is it is only a CR13 MLV steel, so, you know, it's not fancy steel. 
but it's something that I really wanted to just get something that was a little bit less expensive to sort of um, kind of prove the concept. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about there, but uh, you have an idea of something that you might like, you might want to carry in instead of just going all in on it. You get something that's maybe a little bit cheaper <laughs> until you can prove the concept. Uh, but anyway, and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so guys, I just wanted to really quick give you a few of my first impressions on the knife and, uh, you know, just tell you a little bit about it. Now, again, this is not a uh, full-on review. This is just an unboxing. This is my first time getting a hold of one, and it's actually my first time with a folding karambit-style knife as well. So a uh, couple, of, couple of new things going on here, but um, I think I may have said earlier, it uh, it is a uh, 8 CR13 MOV blade, which again, you know, not the greatest steel, but uh, not a bad steel either, but more sort of on the uh, budget end. But I will say out of the box, it is super sharp. So if you get one, guys, be careful. Uh, I, I know you probably saw earlier where it just shredded through that paper. Um, it does have full steel liners here, which is nice. Uh, the material, I think I said it was G2 before, but they're saying it's a, a glass filled nylon. So, you know, sort of, sort of like a G2 type material. Uh, but again, it does have full steel liners. It has a, looks like a T8 pivot here. And uh, most of the body screws are T6s. Again, it does have a nice flat lay clip there. And uh, yeah, really, really nice looking knife. I mean, it just looks wicked. You know, it just it has that, that mean looking style to it. Um, I like it a lot. And I, I'm totally sold on the Karambit idea. I'm really, really fascinated by this quick opening mechanism. I think that is really neat. This is a liner lock, which again, guys, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know, I've sort of come around to the liner locks. So, um, you know, that doesn't bother me. And again, this one has a good, I mean, it looks like it's getting like a, I'll let you see there. It looks like it's getting a good, like 60% lock up inside that liner. So a very good lock up on it. It does have nice jimping on the flipper tab and it is spring assisted. So it really does pop out there. This is uh, probably actually my first spring assisted knife. So uh, not quite used to the feeling of it yet, but man, it it just, that blade just flies right out there. Um, with the thumb studs, it's even easier to uh, do that index finger deployment, which as you guys know is, is my preferred method of deployment. So, you know, what, what this kind of does to me is it, it's a little bit different blade shape, but the ergonomics guys, it, if you haven't held a karambit you can't beat the ergonomics of this. I mean, if you look at that, it's just made to fit right into your hand. Um, good jimping back here. So, you know, you can use it really well for cutting stuff. Like I said, it, it shredded right through that paper earlier. And uh, when Travis was talking about it in his video, he talked about how he used it for an everyday carry knife. So this is definitely going to go into the pocket. Um, I like some of the little design details that it has. It has a nice grippy texture to the handles and it's got a little bit of a cut out here um, you know it just has some stylistic cuts and lines in it I guess to make it not look you know just plain or flat or whatever but um, yeah really super cool looking knife and um, these have interested me so much I'm, I'm gonna look into getting one that's a little more upgraded um, I do have I'll put a link in the description for this where you can pick one up on Amazon they're running about $44 right now. Um, I did see where they've got this with the nylon handled, or like a nylon style trainer that you can get with it, which I would highly recommend guys because you don't want to train with this thing because I'm telling you, it, it is super sharp. So this is not one that, um, that I even want to play around with at all. Um, I slightly cut myself on the pinky with it earlier, but uh, I cut myself across the abdomen with it uh trying to get the draw technique down so this is the pain and suffering that i go through for you guys so anyway uh, if you like the video guys please leave a like down below uh down here and <laughs> i'm just not used to this camera angle but yeah uh if you like the video leave a like down here for me um let me know that you like the content comment down below tell me uh are you familiar with the karambits do you carry a karambit are you a uh, big fan of karambit I always have been, but uh, I, I've never had a folding one. And uh, 
you know, like I said, that video just got me thinking about it. And sometimes a video can just open up new doors for you. Um, also, I didn't mention before, it does have a 12 millimeter thick blade. So it, it actually has a pretty, pretty substantial blade there. But again, the, uh, the curve of the, the curve of the knife wants to pull material into it. And it's got a nice hollow ground here. So it, it, I'm telling you guys, it's wicked, wicked sharp right out of the box. I don't think it needs a touch up anything. Uh, I think I need to cut a few things with it and uh, maybe get it to chill out just a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, guys, hope everybody's having a great week so far. I hope everybody's ready for the uh, big uh, TGI pocket dump we got coming tomorrow night. Make sure that you are subscribed. Guys, if you're not subscribed, be sure and subscribe down below so that you can stay up to date on the latest and greatest EDC gear, knives, pouches, multi-tools, uh, you know, just anything that you might want to look and see. We uh, got a lot of new content coming out. We do have a big 500 subscriber giveaway coming up. I swear I'm going to do it. Um, don't give up on me. I'm trying to get it all put together. But uh, anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. Don't forget, always be caring. And the best gear, it's the gear you have on you. Average gear reviewer, I'm out of here. The best gear is the gear you have on you.